Yeah, I know what's on your mind. What in the hell is up with this market? And where is it going to go from here? Well, we're going to talk about some of the ways it could go because we don't know which way it will go. Let me share with you the information that I have and maybe it gives some insight and maybe you just realize that, you know, we're all humans and we're making our best guesses as to what happens from here. And you know the biggest projects out there don't even know which way this is going to go. But we do have some clues and I want to talk about the clues about what might be going on. As well as I want to share with you what's on my mind in general. So we're going to skip right into the details today and skip the intro. So what are the clues? Okay, so we have some clues that some of this big drop that we had a few days ago was pre-planned. That there might have been a big group of whales behind it and they purposely drove it down to the 30,000 mark. And they made a crap ton of money doing that. Well, they wrecked all these longs. And all these people put in longs, if they weren't in longs already, they put them in at 38,000, and those absolutely got blown through. And those that didn't put stop losses in absolutely got wrecked. And hundreds of millions of dollars of longs got wrecked. Now, realize that when longs are getting wrecked, there's people on the other side of that trade that are making a mint. And that's how people, whales, can make huge amounts of money while creating a total market crash. And guess what? It's not even illegal. Might be immoral or unethical, but it's not illegal. And is it immoral or unethical? I don't know. I mean, if you had $10 billion, would you do it? Make, you know, your $10 billion into $30 billion? Who knows? I don't know. I'm not in that shape. I probably wouldn't do it myself. Um, would love to at least be on the list to know that they were doing it, but you know, they didn't reach out to me and tell me. So I guess there was a post before this all happened laying out exactly what was going to happen, which is interesting. So why would that post be put out? Now, perhaps Alex Becker talked about it, and I liked his reasoning behind it. Perhaps the plan was to put it out because nobody would take it seriously at first. Then when they see they called exactly it, that channel would then have some influence to be able to force a sell like that again without them having to put as much capital behind it. Because you realize in order for somebody to dump the market that big, it takes billions, if not tens of billions of dollars. And they start a cascade, which all they have to do is start it because all the longs that get liquidated, it really helps the cascade. And then people panic sell, which furthers the cascade effect, right? So... Perhaps they set up that account so that then it would have some credibility so they could create another cascade, my guess, in the near future. Perhaps even it's what's happening today. Start another cascade to push the market down again so that they could have some shorts in and make a mint of money. And then they can buy longs at the bottom, right? That may be what's happening. And so this could just be purposely created FUD, purposely created uh, engineering that brought the market to its knees or could be the beginning of the bear market, which a lot of people are suggesting, right? So the clues indicate to me that a lot of this is pre-planned and orchestrated to drive the market down, which is a different thing than it naturally getting closer to the bear market. Now, 2017 was interesting because the beginning of the bear market actually was signaled by a gigantic crash. Interestingly enough, it was a gigantic crash on the day that finally big institutions could short and long Bitcoin. So my guess is that a bunch of them bought short positions, sold off a ton of Bitcoin, and made a mint because they were selling the top as well as shorting the way down, right? So who knows? I mean, we saw in 2017 it was a coordinated effort like that that signaled the end of the bull run in the beginning of the bear market. So is that the case here? My guess is no, even though it's coordinated sell-off pressure so that they can make some money probably on some shorts as well as sell the top and buy the bottom. It's pretty early in the cycle. There's a lot of things still to come, and maybe, maybe Bitcoin has peaked out but my guess is, even if it has, and I don't think it has, that the altcoins haven't peaked out because you're going to have a lot of money inflow into Polkadot with the parachain auctions coming up. 
as well as Cardano's ecosystem and smart contracts is really starting to come online. In the next three months, it will be amazing. So even if Bitcoin is uh, at its day, its peak, and that it's going to have a downward trend overall for the next two and a half years, which I don't think it has had its peak for this market cycle, but maybe, then um, the altcoins still have some room to grow. Now, what if that was just coordinated FUD to make a whole bunch of money, got a bunch of people scared because the market tries to take the most amount of people, uh, blah, the most amount of money from the most amount of people. And that was a great way to do it because all the longs that got liquidated, some people made it absolutely rich, but only a small percentage while everyone else got hurt. And that does frequently happen. But also reset some expectations because a lot of people who are new to crypto in the past two months have thrown money into everything, made really good money, and hadn't yet experienced losses, which will never continue for very long, right? And so even if, as I suspect, we still have plenty of bull market to go, a big correction was due. Who could have thought there would be this big of a correction? But a big correction was due nonetheless. And so I just think that there were some big hands in play that led to this big of a correction, and maybe even one more. Maybe uh, this week it could be what's happening today. Another coordinated sell-off with some other FUD about, wow, China once again going after Bitcoin, China making Bitcoin illegal, whatever. You know, gosh, that's the same story every time it is pre-planned FUD to drive the market down. They run that story over and over again, which is funny. So, what would I weight my chance, my thoughts on the chances that we are at the end of the bull market? I'd give it a solid 10%. Now, I know a lot of other people that have been in the space for longer, and they give it at least 50% chance. Me personally, I mean the weight that I give it, that this bull run is over is 10%. Could be higher than that, but that's what I feel it is. So that's why I'm sharing that number with you. 90% chance that this will be a setback that will go for two or three weeks maybe even a bigger pullback than what we've seen so far, really washing out the paper hands, and then we'll resume. And what's great about if that's what happens is that after such a large pullback, there's some huge potential upside if it does play out like that, which is exciting. So I want to share with you something that's on my mind because I'm – having to look at what to do with my time and what is good use of my time. So I have been doing some research on some of the plays on a sector of the market that I'm interested in for a lot of reasons, but that I think there's plenty of room for it to do good. And I wanted to bring two projects to your attention. Now, it's still early days. It's hard to get tons of research on them, but I like exactly where they're positioned. Now, they're positioned in the NFT space. And if you think about NFTs, a lot you've seen kind of collectibles. And NBA Top Shots has done amazing with their collectible sports moments. Then you have some of the other ones like Chili's and their soccer teams and stuff, or football teams, depending on what part of the world you're in. As well as you have like Ecomi has done their collectibles like Black, Batman, Black and White, and some of the other things in the VV universe that they're building and that's great, but also think about music and think about sports tickets and other things. NFTs have so much use in everyday life of what they could be used for in addition to just collectibles. And so the NFT space is a bigger ecosystem can be gigantic. And both these projects I want to share with you today are positioned really, really well for it. And the first one I want to share with you today is XP Network. Now, Really, really smart positioning on this. So they made this so that you can create and deploy your NFT dApps on any of the 10 chains that they support. And they will be supporting probably even more over time. But all the interesting chains here, except I don't see... Oh, there it is, Cardano. So they are so well positioned. Imagine if you could build your NFTs on one platform. And this is going to be based on Polkadot. But on Polkadot, the way it's set up, they'll then be able to deploy these on all these different um, apps. And imagine you can have NFTs, create them in one place, but they're usable on any of the chains. Isn't that exactly where something needs to be? 
I mean, think about all the trapped NFTs on the Ethereum chain right now, because I don't know about you, I have a bunch of collectibles that I bought during the down market, like Gods Unchained cards, which I don't know how to play card games. It's not really my thing, but they were cool. They were one of the first dApps, and they had a playable card game um, that's kind of like Magic the Gathering, but, you know, online cards. And some of those are worth a lot. Uh, some of them are worth three, four, five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. But most of them are worth $0.15, cents, $0.20. Cents. And you realize being on the Ethereum chain, they are stuck there. Because, like, even if I were to sell that for a dollar, it's going to be a $15 transaction cost at a minimum in order to exchange on that thing. So they are stuck on the Ethereum chain. So, uh, yeah, I mean... They're stuck for now until Ethereum really gets gas fees way down, right? So imagine you could deploy your NFT assets on this or through this, and they can be brought over to any chain possible. Wouldn't you agree that positioning for XP Network is exactly right? Now, how to get XP Network, you can't. It's still in the early days. This is some of my research on what's coming down the pipe, and this is from some of my connections that screen a lot of stuff that hasn't been released yet that's coming down the pipe and I want to share this one with you because they are positioned in just the right place and you can find them at xp.network don't sleep on this one this one is one to follow now who knows I this one has several launch pads that they might end up being launched on that is your best place to get the best price on them possible if you can't get that, if you can snipe the contract right as it comes available, sometimes you get an amazing price. Um, I did see an article on how to snipe that. I'll share with you in one of my videos upcoming that without a bot, you can try to get those good prices. It takes a little bit of programming skills, but I found an, uh, an article that walks you through how to do that because I've always been so curious how they do that. And um, pretty cool. So I'll share that sometime in the future because that would be very helpful to be able to pick up those things right as they launch. Like, So my guess is XP Network will come to us through one or two different launch pads. Which ones? Um, yeah, this would be a great one, like I said before, to get at those prices. They will likely not return to those prices if my thesis is correct that we are not truly at the end of this bull run. If we are at the end of this bull run, then... Probably it will pop off, but then in the months following, it will come back to below those kind of prices. And you'll know probably by the time this one is launched, uh, really whether my thesis that we're not at the end of the bull market was right or not. All right, let's look at the other one. You you can come to their website and look at their team. Solid, really uh, well done website, lots of good information. The other one I wanted to bring to you is Nifty Pays. And so this is uh, a doc I was able to get my hands on sharing you with you a little bit about it. But, you know, one of the big things about decentralized finance is your ability to get loans against your capital, right? And it allows you a lot of things, but you can leverage your capital to invest in other things or to then use it well. Depending on what rate you're borrowing at, you can then invest that money at a higher rate. And you can make some money through doing that. That's essentially what banks do. But what was next in coming is NIFT being able to take out loans against your NFTs. Now, some NFTs have huge amounts of value. Nobody's going to give you a loan on a 15-cent card, collectible NFT. But what about a LeBron James card that you know is selling for 100000 or 250000 Should be able to get a loan against that, depending on how much collateral you want. But what if you could pull out like 20% or 40% of that? So this was something where things had to go. And think about a lot of artists who will then start to release their um, albums and other things as NFTs. And the value of that that holds maybe the intellectual property rights for that, and then they would be able to get a loan against the value of that song they created or that album they created. And so they are positioned in a place Nifty Pays is of where I think there could be a lot of uh, use case for it. So they're the first ones that I'm aware of that are really hitting this. And when I was reading through this, uh, totally fascinating. So I want to bring these two to your attention. None of them are, gosh, I, I haven't seen release dates on either of these. Can't imagine they're any sooner than a month. 
but these are both ones to keep your eyes on. Now, if NFTs aren't your thing at all, that's okay. I mean, even some of the richest billionaires realize that NFTs are where so much of the money is. And even if you're not into, like, sports collectibles or game-type collectibles or Pokemon collectibles, should they come on the Internet finally um, or come into the crypto space finally, that's okay because NFTs can be songs, can be all kinds of monetized things. Intellectual property rights can be monetized and other things through NFTs. And so I think they're exactly in the right place, as well as those same NFTs and songs could be deployed through here and be compatible with all the different chains. So both of these really had my attention, wanted to share them with you. What am I doing? I'm not just sitting around twiddling my thumbs worrying about this, as well as I want to share with you, um, I've been working a lot in the background with some connections that I have about how to make the channel better and increase the production quality and value, bring it to you, trying to make the bigger vision of what I've shared with you. Now, like I shared with you in the beginning, I'm just an investor myself, a crypto investor, just four years in crypto, 20 years in real estate and other types of investment. I created this channel so that I could get to talk to the companies behind the scenes and get more information from them and share more of that information with you. And some of those dialogues are happening. And some of them, the connections have been refused. Um, some people did not want to come on my show because... They didn't say it, but essentially it's not big enough for them or whatever. And that's okay. That just tells me there's a lot more work to do, a lot more growing to do. And in the past two weeks, I've been talking with some good connections I have that are very sharp about um, if they're interested in working with me to increase the production quality. Because my background is not in essentially TV production and other thing, but um, two of them, that is their background. And so we're in some talks now and see if it all comes together. Uh, so that the channel quality can go up drastically. And what that will do is help me get bigger reach overall as far as audience size. And as I get bigger audience size, then it's easier and easier to get more of the different guests that we all want to see come on the show and share with you what's going on. So I do want to thank each of you who have joined me on this journey. Um, I call you the Rainmakers because, honestly, um, you know, you're – making it rain for your own financial future. And unfortunately, there's a lot of like rough days and even rough times like this. And if you look at one of the wealthiest people in all the world, and um, that's the CEO of Amazon, and he actually went through so many rough times, and Amazon had so many valleys, had some peaks, but it had tons of valleys, that there were only three investors that held from the very beginning all the way till like 25 years later, and that was the CEO and his two parents. So three total people were the only ones that held that whole time or hodled Amazon stock because of all the down days. And I know these down days are hard. And is this the end of the bull market? Just know that it could be. I don't think it is, but it could be. And so if you're in here for the long term, great. Um, you know, if you use money, like we always say, only invest money you can lose, you can afford to lose. Well, what's good about that is you don't need to pull it out to pay rent. And so the worst is selling after massive, massive drops. So is a lot of what, you know, I've invested in is going to be worth a lot more in four years from now than it is today? Probably. Probably. Um, so we'll see how this all shakes out. We'll probably know in three or four weeks. In the meantime, if you're looking for some good research to do, these are two projects I would suggest you take a look at, Nifty Pays and XP.network, and um, see if you're interested in them too. Both of them are big enough. They'll probably be coming to us through some good launch pads. And so possibly a chance to get them right away. And even, you know, if you get into them right away, it's never a bad idea if you get on the IDO to flip it when that IDO goes crazy so that you can buy more back when it settles some, even if you like it for the long term. Just my two cents. I do want to thank each of you for joining me on this journey. I hope you're doing well. I know it's frustrating going through this. Like the analogy I gave the other day, it's like wrecking your bike into the curb you weren't a biker, maybe you did have a skateboard. If not, we've all fallen down, had that really bad wreck. And that's what it feels like. And, you know, it's okay that emotionally you're still recovering from that. 
that's normal. Even the projects themselves are going through that. And I was supposed to have two AMAs this week, and they requested we just delay it because everybody's licking their wounds right now. Make sense? All right, guys, I do thank you for joining me. I'm going to send you over to Manuela, who record this song for all you Rainmakers. Thanks. Success is falling, flowing like rain. The timing's right, we're getting paid. Come on, Rainmakers, let's make this happen.